It's here. And let's jump right into it. Spawning in the bottom right position as the Blue Terran player coming in from Quantic Gaming. He just took out Zenio. It is Apocalypse. I didn't just mess up the camera. And spawning in the top left position as the red Protoss player who's sending out a very fast probe. It is evil. Excuse me. I keep looking at the EGTL. The EGTL just throws me off. It is Team Liquid's hero who gets a zoom in for no reason other than the fact that he sent out a fast proxy probe. There it is, guys. We're going to see some fine cheddar this game. I hope you brought your cheese graters because it's about to go down now. Apocalypse, he's got a couple of choices he can make here. One of them could be to go command center first. That choice would lose him this game. Um, yeah. So, this is going to be uh, pretty interesting. I don't have much else. Oh, Apocalypse is going gas first. This is going to be tough um, because we are going to see... Actually, the gateway will start at a pretty normal time for Hero, which means that if Apocalypse goes straight for a Widow Mine, he might maybe possibly potentially have a chance at not dying to this, but it's going to be really difficult. There's the barracks now starting up. This first Zealot will arrive. There will be no wall set up to actually stop the Zealot. Apocalypse is not SCV scouting, and I think Hero pretty much says, you know what? We're both, you know, you guys, of course, you guys didn't see in the pregame lobby because you wouldn't have been able to see both these guys, Grandmaster in Korea. Um, these guys must play each other on ladder every now and again. And Apocalypse, you know, uh, this is a pretty good build from Hero to use against him. The gateway's about to complete. He sees gas first. This is a pretty good position for Hero. As by the time a factory finishes, there will already be a Zealot inside Apocalypse's base. Now, the Cybernetics Core is starting up. So there's also going to be a Stalker before there's a Widow Mine on the field, which is also very important to know. First Marine is on the way. We do have the, um... Oh, goodness. He needs to start that factory. Orbital Command is now beginning. He really needs to start his factory. I think by not building it, he might make Hero think that it's being proxied, but Hero sees it start anyway. So, Apocalypse right now... Oh, this is such a weird spot. He's going to build a Reaper after this first Marine. I do like this play, but the Marine trying to get that probe will not grab it just yet. Now there's a Zealot on the field. Um, we do see a Stalker beginning as well for Evil... Uh, God, I keep I keep wanting to say Evil Geniuses. I really keep wanting to say Evil Geniuses. Um, but it's Liquid. Liquid Hero. And once the Stalker's out, this is where things get tough. The factory's not done just yet. We have a Bunker beginning, but... I don't think it's going to be in time. Um, here we go. Hero's coming up here with his first Zealot to try to shut this down. Now it's a Marine and a Reaper. And while both of these units are pretty good uh, in early stages of games, they're not really that good versus Protoss. So here we go. SCV's being pulled. He needs to start this Widow Mine. This is a critical moment as a second Stalker is on the way. The Reaper taking a lot of damage. Zealot trying to get on top of that Marine. Oh, it does not manage to kill it off. And the SCVs with the Marine support do look like they will be able to show this back for now. Oh, but the second Stalker is about to show up. The Reaper is dead. It's just two Marines. The SCVs need to come back here to help hold this attack off. Apocalypse, I think he's getting a little too comfortable a little too soon. He needs to recognize that this is a proxy play, and that is uh, really dangerous. Oh, the Widow Mine, if he kills this mine, that's going to be Curtains. He does manage to say, keep, get the Widow Mine burrowed, but he needs to get that mine burrowed right up here by the wall. Ooh, the Stalker's getting in a lot of damage, and now the SCV's actually being used to repair a Widow Mine. Not something that we typically see having to happen, but now the Starport is coming in as well. A bunker on the high ground. Apocalypse is pretty worried. I would be worried in this situation. Um, also, a little bit of a supply block hitting him because that cannot start this next mine just yet. Delayed by about 10 seconds or so. Now, the probe wants to bait out the Widow Mine shot um, so that the Stalkers can just come in here and kill all the Marines. But no such luck yet. Apocalypse doing a great job of preventing that Widow Mine um, from being baited. And we see behind this two gateways being added and a robotics facility with the expansion for Hero. So he's not going all in with this. He's just, you know, he's taking, he's capitalizing on his pressure, is what he's trying to do most. And that's just, you know, abusing the fact that his opponent's stuck on one base. There was no expansion to begin with. And while there will be a medevac and the Widow Mine's out, Apocalypse won't really be able to do anything with a Widow Mine drop because that's exactly what Hero's prepared for. We even see that the Mothership Core is at home defending. And with this natural nexus now finished as well, 
It, he will be able to fold and overcharge that once he gets enough energy. And here we go, the first medevac. Here we go, three mines gonna load up. And Apocalypse, he needs to make something happen right now. He needs to do something because he's a little bit in a, in a somewhat shaken up position. Now, Hero didn't really kill too much. So it's not like Apocalypse is behind in this game. He just doesn't have any kind of expansion set up. And um, Hero knows what he's doing. And this is where Apocalypse is either going to fall behind, get ahead, or hopefully do enough damage to break even. Uh, because even just killing a couple of probes will be enough. Now, we do have a cloak follow-up as well. I'm not sure how effective Banshees are versus Protoss due to Photon Overcharge and how easy it is to get Observers. Now, this Observer for Hero is going to poke away at these Supply Depots. Really nice play to just deal some damage. Oh, one mine is going to drop now in this natural mineral line. Hero does pull the probes away. Nothing happening there. Two little mines here. He's going to try to burrow them. Photon Overcharge gets activated. Will he get anything, though? Ooh, oh, he could get these probes. There we go. That's a nice amount of damage done by Apocalypse. Getting six. It's not a lot. It's not a really crazy amount of probes, but it is something. And at the same time, he loses two depots. Now he's going to lose a third supply depot. Scans to kill the observer with the widow mine. The medevac will not make it away. But these marines trying to do some damage. Four stalkers. Big pain in the in the rear here for Apocalypse. And he does have the banshee coming in as well. Killing off that observer was nice because now he only has uh, one. So if he wants to move it between the bases to spot, it's going to be very difficult. But Fulton Overcharge still makes this really really rough um the siege tank is enough to push this away though the big problem right now for apocalypse he does not have an expansion even started here we go the banshee's gonna try to come in here and kill some probes it should be able to get some damage then because the observer has to cross the other side of the map the banshees need to move and uh, i really like this play from apocalypse the only problem right now is that despite killing off economy of his opponent uh, there's now enough economy for hero that even with the same number of workers spread across two bases he is he should be mining more aside from mules Mules will be the only big pain, and this Banshee's just trying to poke away. It's really just trying to be, you know, a, a big annoying pain, pain in the ass, um, as it were. Apocalypse, though, he is he is advancing forward slower than the slowest turtle in all of the sea. Um, not even yet claiming his natural back yet. Poking with the Banshees, which is totally fine. But now there's another Observer. Two more Stalkers in the natural. This next Banshee should not... Too much. And with three siege tanks, I mean, I guess Apocalypse's only option here is to go all in. Um, I guess that's that's what he wants to do. He wants to just pull everything. Once he gets this third siege tank out, I expect Apocalypse to just pull everything. Um, he doesn't have many other. He doesn't have any other choice. Um, he the Banshee's gonna try to work away at the proxy uh, gateways pylon, which is nice actually. He will lower Hero to only having these three gateways, which is a big limiting on the production. There's the SCV train now. I expected to see more SCVs, but he wants to stay saturated. He wants to keep producing units behind this. Apocalypse needs to go now, though, because there is an Immortal on the field. Once a second Immortal comes out, that's where things get really, really difficult as far as actually stopping this. So, this is this, this should be interesting. Here we go. I, we haven't actually seen this style of 1-1-1 in a while, and the Photon Overcharge is kind of designed to counter this. So, well, there he's going to have a Photon Overcharge, but... The Banshee's helping to take out some of these units with the Siege Tanks. Blink is on the way, which is kind of cool. He, a hero might just try to blink onto the army or go for a blink counterattack of sorts. Now, the Fulton Overcharge is about to get triggered. Um, Apocalypse wants that triggered as soon as possible, so there we go. But no, he might just move in on this. Apocalypse, he is going in deep here, trying to just target down those Immortals with the Banshees. The Stalkers are not in a good position. Apocalypse, he's going to do it. He's going to break this line. There's, there's some Stalkers coming from behind, but there's too many Siege Tanks, I feel. But these Banshees left completely unanswered. The probes are being pulled versus Siege Tanks. Never a position you want to be in. Apocalypse just needs to make sure he focuses down these Stalkers outside the natural. He will be able to pick them off, but... The Nexus still remains, so Apocalypse will lose most everything. But I think the probe line being pulled for Hero gave, gives Apocalypse a huge edge. And I, I'm actually not too sure how, to feel, how I feel about this game anymore. Apocalypse does move the barracks over to the tech lab. He's going to start researching his But now, uh, one Banshee can beat two Stalkers, by the way, in a head-to-head -head fight. So in, even in these low numbers, there's a lot that Apocalypse can do. There's also no more fucking overcharge, which means probes that are near these bases can get picked off. But a nice use of Blink by Hero to, to secure that, those couple of kills. But... But right now he's left a couple of stalkers and that's it. Apocalypse is at the tower. He's gonna try to take a fight here. These banshees 
doing some damage, but the uh, the stalkers do blink away. And I think this is a situation where Apocalypse is happy he didn't pull all of his SCVs um, because he does have a good amount of economy to fall back on. He still has the mules. Worst comes to worst, he can just lift off to his natural. The starport is going to not do anything weird. He's just going to build a raven. I like this decision. Good versus the uh, the stalkers, of course, and also for kicking out the observers. But Apocalypse is going to have to stim in about 20 seconds. I, I think at this point, once Apocalypse gets to him, he's good. Ooh, nice. Picks off the Observer. He does lose one of his Banshees in the process, but killing that Observer means Apocalypse can uh, be a bit more aggressive with the Banshee. In fact, uh, how many Observers do we have on the field? Just one, and that is... Yeah, it just came out. Apocalypse will lose his Widow Mine, but these Stalkers blinking like champs. Just trying to run away as much as possible. And uh, Apocalypse now with Stim. He's going to run up here and try to catch these Stalkers. The Stalkers do blink away. Apocalypse needs to be careful that he doesn't overextend here because there is a Photon Overcharge available with the Mothership Core. There are a good number of Blink Stalkers. And he just needs to be, he just needs to be smart. He doesn't have to do anything crazy. This is Zealot Counterattack going in from Hero, which could actually do a bit of damage. These Marines should spot it if Apocalypse is paying attention. But here we go. Terran player is going to move in on this Nexus. The Marine stimming. These Stalkers are going to come in from the rear. And here we go. He's moving in on this force, but the bio is just too strong. The Widow Mine's right here. This Nexus will fall. The Observer dies as well. The Zealot not able to do anything at all. And that Nexus, oh, it's dead. The Raven here, auto turret is dropped. And now he can pick off Observers freely. The Banshee gets in a ton of extra DPS for free. Apocalypse takes out the Mothership Core and presses into the main base. This is a dire position right now for Hero. As uh, I, I think Apocalypse right now, maybe want to get that, uh, that that Raven out of there. There are no Observers on the field. And that Raven is a big expensive target. No, actually, there it is. He's going to focus it. He will get the Observer. That Widow Mine still adding in extra damage. Very nice play from Apocalypse. He's going to lose the Raven, but... Um, He's still in an okay spot. The big issue here is that there's still a lot of stalkers on the field. In Apocalypse, he lost a lot of supply fighting that. Well, it's not. it doesn't actually cost any supply to have, use Photon Overcharge. So, just the two for the Mothership Corps. So, Hero does have a supply advantage. It's pretty much entirely in this in the army. Um, he's He is up about seven or so probes. Not really a big deal when you consider that there are meals for Apocalypse. And... Well, this is it. I think Hero might just try to dive in right now. He's going to use the Zealot, bait out the Widow Mine, and uh, that's it. He's going to run in now, trying to use the Stalkers to blink as well as he can. This is do or die for Apocalypse. I'd like to see him pull the SCVs, because in all honesty, all he needs to do is hold this attack off, and he wins the game. But the Bioforce is slowly dwindling, and this might be enough for Hero to secure himself a win in game number two. This is such a close little skirmish. The Medivac does pop out in just the nick of time to heal. This Marauder, though, will die instantly, trying to micro that. And I think Apocalypse really wishes he'd actually brought those, uh... I think Apocalypse is really wishing he'd brought his, his SCVs with that to the ramp. And there's the GG. Such a close-knit game. And Apocalypse will drop Hero, securing game number two in this Acer Team Story Cup. Best of nine. Um, great, great play. That was ridiculously close. I'm not going to lie to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I was pretty sure Hero was dead um, upon losing his natural expansion. But losing the Raven really hurt. I think losing the... Well, losing his ramp without pulling the SCVs really hurt him the most because all he needed to do is survive that attack. He pretty much completely crippled Hero. And then in low econ situations, Terran wins because he can just float to his natural. So... We'll have to see who uh, Quantic Gaming is going to send out next, guys. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the Acer Team Story Cup. Currently, this match is tied 1-1, to one, and it is a best of nine. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll get you with the next game as soon as we can.